Good morning. And welcome East Orrington Congregational Church as we come together to celebrate uh, the blessings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what God has blessed us with. And we come together as a community and a, a family brought together out of love. And so welcome as we, as we get recharge, um, a focus on, on who God is. Today uh, we have, we'll be recognizing, at the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. We'll be recognizing that uh, through Patrick. He'll be singing a song, but he'll also probably be sharing a little bit of his story with you. And, and it's just to recognize um, that we all are different. We all have different uh, situations, but we are one in this family. And so we recognize what Patrick will be singing to us. And, and so I hope, you, I hope you can just really just take that in a little bit. Uh, before we get going too far, I have to invite my, the clerk of your church, uh, Tanya, to come up and read the warrant because in two weeks we do have a meeting. Yeah, well, because I wrote it. See how big I wrote it? To the members of the East Orrington Congregational Church, you are hereby notified that the annual meeting of the East Orrington Congregational Church will be held on Sunday, June 12, 2022, following morning worship, to act upon the following articles. Article 1, to accept the various reports as printed in the 2021-2022 annual report. Article 2, to hear the report of the Board of Trustees and their recommendations for the 2022-2023 budget. Article 3, to hear the recommendations of the Advisory Board and elect officers, board, committee, and ministry team members for 2022-2023. Article 4, to hear the report of the senior pastor. Article 5, to hear the report of the moderator. Article 6, to transact any other business, including the bylaws, that may legally come before said meeting. Given under my hand this 29th day of May, 2022, Tanya Kingsbury. report if you are one of the people that need to send in a report for the for the annual uh, meeting uh, those are due on June 1st which is this Wednesday so so uh, start getting start getting your hands ready to start writing and I uh, get that into Allison by June 1st or early early on June 2nd like 8 15 because we're going to be putting the programs together so people can pick them up the following Sunday uh, today um, we, we, oh, before I do, next Saturday we also have a foot clinic uh, that will be happening here at the church that Heather has been working with uh, this community and, and our church family. Uh, that's next Saturday from 9 until 4 right here at the church. That's downstairs, so just go around the back, and uh, she'd love to have you. Are appointments necessary? Yes. Yeah, prefer. And then the other thing that's going to be happening the following day, well, that day we have a supper at 4.30. Uh, we invite you to that to support that and help us out in that way. But also on June 5th, um, Courtney will be, if anybody's interested, will be doing a, a cybersecurity, just a, a way of how, how do you protect yourself online, you know, without giving away all your information? What are the tricks and the deceptions that are happening out there? And so she has... Uh, put together a, a small program, but in there, there's also a questionnaire that um, if you go on our website or on my Facebook, you'll be able to punch it right up. Uh, but there's also a questionnaire, so if you have particular questions of, of why something is happening, um, she'll be able to answer those for you. So that's going to happen directly after church next Sunday. That's June 5th. And finally, today we come together as a nation as well. Um, on, in this church, we will celebrate Memorial Day today. Uh, remembering those who died during their service um, in war and in battle. And that's what Memorial Day is all about, unity, coming together, remembering those who sacrificed it all. And so today we ask you to stand as our colors, our flag is posted.
soon as they turn to walk, they're going to start playing the song. For example. So please remain standing as we're going to invite the light of Christ in. And also we're going to be singing, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, hymn number 522. And so let us just celebrate uh, God's presence with us and, and the music of this church, please. said may is mental health awareness month and i've noticed that a lot of people don't really talk about mental health because it's either personal to them or ju they just don't want to acknowledge it exists i was one of the people who thought it was just personal to me so i never talked about it and tended to bottle everything up until it just became too much to where i attempted to take my life in 2020 on multiple occasions and if you were at the variety show you've heard that entire story and Citizen Soldier dropped their song, I'm Not Okay, the day I attempted it for the last time, and their music is what's helped me try to become into a better mindset along with wanting to be there for everyone around me in my life who I know would miss me if I was gone. And the song that I'm going to be singing is their song called Still Breathing. It's off their latest album, This Is Your Sign, Part 2. 
and the entire base of the albums are it's just an emotional roller coaster of the different spectrums of emotions and things that mental health can do to a person and this is in my opinion one of their most most uplifting songs and one that has a fantastic message with it because it just shows that as long as we're still breathing our story is not over yet so go ahead and play it dan I'll never know your pain. I've never walked in your shoes. I know your life ain't fair. I know it's damn near killed you. You've been through hell. You blame yourself. A painful past you can't forgive. You had no help, but time will tell if it's a curse or it's a gift. But if you're still breathing, breathing, you made it through your darkest days. If your heart's still beating, beating, then you are gonna be okay. You've had millions of reasons to bend and to break, but you're still alive and that's not a mistake. The war in your head tells a story that's still worth believing, cause you're still breathing. Cause you're still breathing. If you've been up all night thinking it won't get better. No need to wear your scars like a scarlet letter. You're on the ledge, but not the end. It helped you see another way. A broken heart, a brand new start. Tomorrow, everything could change. Cause if you're still breathing, breathing, you made it through your darkest days. If your heart's still beating, beating, then you are gonna be okay. You've had millions of reasons to bend and to break, but you're still alive and that's not a mistake. The war in your head tells a story that's still worth believing, cause you're still breathing. You're alive, you survived, it's a sign and the proof is in your pulse. The brightest stars only shine in the dark, you are stronger than you know. You are stronger than you know. So if you're still breathing, breathing, you made it through your darkest days. If your heart's still beating, beating, then you are gonna be okay. You've had millions of reasons to bend and to break, but you're still alive and that's not a mistake. The war in your head tells a story that's still worth believing, cause you're still breathing. final thing I just want to leave everyone with is, like I said in the beginning, as long as you're still breathing, then that's just proof that God's not done with you and that your story isn't over yet. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. So as we let that sink in. See, it's something that many of us will not ever understand what Patrick went through. But his isn't the only story. We all have stories. We all have moments. And it might not be mental health moments, but they're stories to be shared. And, I, and as Patrick has said to me many times, is this song helped him through it. But he also knows that God was with him during the whole time. And God brought him through it. And so let us join together and, and celebrate the love of God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, Father, we come before you celebrating life, 
Celebrating that we're still breathing and that we still have hope. That when we put you into our life, when, when we allow you to lead and to, to be the pilot, Lord, uh, all things are possible. New things can happen at any moment. And we celebrate that, O oh Lord. We celebrate the mystery of life. We celebrate your, your wisdom and the teachings of your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we, we thank you for leaving us the Holy Spirit that will guide us, remind us and convict us that we are worthy, that we are loved, that we need to continue to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that we're still breathing. Father, we thank you for all those that have served this country and sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice of their life. We honor them on this very Sunday morning. We honor them through how we treat each other. We honor them through the way we live our lives. And Father, it's the same way that we are called to honor all people, to love them as you have loved us. Father, we do pray for all the families that are, have been separated because of um, disasters, hatred, mental illness. Whatever it may be, oh Lord, we, we pray for for those that have felt this separation. We pray for all the families down in Texas right now that, that are living a loss, grieving. Oh, Father, may their sadness and their anger channel into being confident in your promises. Father, we pray for those who serve in our armed forces today. We pray for uh, the men and the women of these incredible groups of people. We pray for their entire families, O oh Lord, as oftentimes separation happens for months on end, not knowing whether their loved one will come home. Lord, we pray this for each family because every day is precious, Lord. Every day is an opportunity to, to love and to show our thankfulness. Father, we pray for all our first responders and firefighters. We, thank, we pray for the frontline workers we pray for the volunteers of this church and those that are stepping up and saying, pick me, that are serving, that are here in, in bodily form. Their presence makes a difference, O oh Lord, as Patrick's today made a difference. Lord, I pray for those that will be traveling this weekend. May they uh, find the comfort and the safety within you, O oh Lord. Father, I pray for my nieces uh, her and Josh will be getting married later today. I pray that this union is a forever union. Lord, I pray for those that are still experiencing COVID, those that are uh, the Betty Spearings of the world. We pray for those that are uh, confined to their home because of illness or disease. We pray for all those that are seeking and wandering. We pray for those that will be fed later today. We pray that not only will the food nourish, nourish them, but the comfort and the presence of some of the youth and the adults will be there as well. Oh Lord, may we use every opportunity to show the world the light, to show the world that you love them. And through us, oh Lord, that love can be, can be seen. Almighty God, I ask for peace. I ask for peace within my heart, within my thoughts within my dealings with other people. Lord, be with us, guide us, and lead us on this very day. Lord God, we take a moment today and uh, just to lift up our own joys and concerns at this very moment. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Father, I pray that each of us in our own prayers will also become part of each other's prayers, part of your prayer, O oh Lord, and be the hands and the feet, the ones who are serving and the ones who are teaching, the ones who are proclaiming the good news. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the family gathered here in this church. 
We thank you for all the opportunities you'll lay in our path this week to show your love. Lord, I lift all these things up to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And I turn to him at this time, O Lord, remembering the prayer he taught us that says, Our Father, who art...
part of the service of the offertory, um, I ask that you just open your heart to give with joy, give with uh, clarity of what God is asking you to give and, and prayerfully uh, give. Give out of the abundance what God has blessed you with as I invite the ushers and deacons for today's offertory. We thank you for the gifts that you have blessed us with, um, our homes and our families, the beautiful sunshine we have today, and the list can go on and on. Father, may we live our lives in that gratitude and thankfulness for what you have blessed us with. May what we don't have be a, a, a minor thought, but may we focus on what we do have, O oh Lord. Father, we ask for your blessings that be upon our lives and upon the gifts that lay upon this table. Be with us and, and help guide us and let us have your wisdom, O oh Lord, in how to circulate these gifts among our community to help promote and grow your kingdom here on earth. Father, I pray this and ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So as we get ready for the scripture readings, I will only be reading uh, from the book of John today. Um, it's going to be John 17, verses 20 through 26. But before we do in our church, we ask the Lord to be present with us, and we, we do a unison prayer together. So I invite you to join with me. It's on the screens as we pray together. Lord, upon the pages of this book is your story. It is also our story. Open our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, our minds that they may understand, and our hearts that they may be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I said, I'm going to be reading from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray for also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, 
that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord for his people. May the Lord bless it to our understanding. Amen. We think about prayer. Yes? Everybody pray? Most people pray every once in a while, every once in a while, every day, every hour, every minute. See, oftentimes we think of prayer. What are you doing? My, oh, it's down here? Thank you, Stephen. I thought you were tapping your head there. <laughs> Still going to the music. So we, we, a lot of times we talk about prayer. And, and we say prayers. 
Because we hear Jesus oftentimes telling us to pray, right? Paul says, pray without ceasing. But oftentimes, as Christians, we don't listen to the prayers that Jesus says. Now, we all know the one that we say every week, the Lord's Prayer, right? We know that one good. How many do you know the one that, by heart, the one that he gave in the upper room? See, that's the prayer that I read from John is given right before he's going to be crucified in the upper room. He's already washed the disciples' feet. They had a meal that they shared together. And then he started praying. First he prayed for his relationship with the Father. Then he prayed for the disciples, their relationship. And, and it was about their relationship. Thirdly, he starts praying for those that will come to know him, God the Father, through the disciples. That's us. So this prayer is so vital. And I think as, as Christians walking in this world today, I think we have made a disaster of this prayer. I'll be honest with you. I am so tired of the nonsense I'm hearing. I'll be honest. With you. I, I, I'm tired of listening to Christians proclaim that you're not a Christian because you don't think the way I think. Or, this happened because this person was different than me. You know what I'm saying, right? See, this prayer, well, let's go to the Lord's Prayer. This, that prayer is about your relationship with God. Thy will be done. See, that's one that nobody really wants to, they, they, they say it, but we don't really want to adhere to it. You know, again, as I think, Allison, you mentioned, and, and we've done that many times in Bible study, that that bumper sticker co-pilot, it should always be the pilot. Right? And, and we're just, we're, we don't want that because we like being in control. So what's this prayer about? I pray for those who will believe in me through their message. Do you hear what that said? In other words, we, you and me, are responsible to be the light that other people see. Not, not that we're not going to be God, but we are going to let God work through us to show the world so they might believe in what we have. See, but in reality, we like hoarding God. We don't want to share God. God's not big enough to have for everybody. That's, if you listen to the news and you listen to the rhetoric, that's basically what they're saying. You know, I, I, I recently heard where a pastor in Tennessee said that if you're a Democrat, you can't be a Christian. Okay. Well, here's a, here's a pastor saying this of a large church. Or you had a, a, a thing that went out into the Internet and then one of our People running for state, Senate, I believe, saying that what happened down in Texas was because they were transgender. And of course, that couldn't be further than the truth. But that's what is going on. So here's this prayer that Jesus is praying for Christians that it's our message that they need to hear to come to know me. This book... The, the, the letters in this book is written to who? I'm sorry? Well, let's be more specific. No. See, that's what we like to say. This book is written for Christians, the, the followers. A lot of people that would pick up the epistle readings and read what Paul is saying wouldn't make any sense if they didn't know Jesus Christ. So the epistle letters are always written to a church. It's written to those that, that are starting to hear the word. And so we are called to introduce people to Jesus Christ so these letters will make some sense. When Paul, Paul says, nothing can separate us from the love of God, if you don't know God, what does that mean to you? Absolutely nothing. So Jesus prays that, that we will be those that will spread the message that they can see and believe through us. Not because of us, but through us. That all of them may be one. <laughs> really? 
How many of you are working with many other churches or other Christians, and how do you feel as one? See, we live in a world full of division. I'm, I'm glad Harlan feels he's completely connected with all churches. That's great, Harlan. Thank you for putting your hand up. Um, because that, that's unusual, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that. But if you look at where we are, the divisions of this world, I mean, could, could you name any divisions that, that are decisive? Again, I'm not talking about being different. I'm talking about divisions. See, when you hear this prayer, you'll never hear Jesus preach about a, a situation or, or a, a topic. He talks about this. He's talking about, will I be strong enough in your life to make a difference in your heart? Because he he's not worried about what's going on out there. He's not worried about the divisions. He's worried about you. Will you change? See, you never hear Jesus talk about a, peculiar, a particular moment. Like, you know, why did that person say what they said? You don't hear Jesus saying that. He's saying, hey, Aaron, you take care of yourself. You show them the love of God. And that's what I want. See, when he's talking about being one, he's talking about being one like who? Well, like, but more than Christ. I'll read it. So that they may be one as we are one. In other words, Jesus is saying that, that we would need to be one like he and the Father is one. It doesn't mean, when he says that, it doesn't mean that Jesus will stop being Jesus and, and the Father will stop being the Father, but they are one together. That's what he's calling us to be. Now, again, he's not saying we can't be different. But he's calling us to be one in the love of the Father. Think about that for a moment. Are you acting to all people love? See, all people. We ought to be one. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. Okay, what he is saying is, you know, Allison, you're a good lady, but you're not going to cut the mustard. You need God to show people love. God has to come through you to be that element, that, that, that moment of love. See, we can have human love, but there's no greater relationship that we can ever put our hands on than that of the Father and the Son. And that's what he's calling us to be. That kind of relationship. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even before, even as you have loved me. Okay, this goes to Mental Health Awareness Month that, that we just talked a little bit about. See, a lot of times, can you picture how much God loves his son Jesus? How much does he love him? Unfathomable. Nice. See, unimaginable. Harlan, you're thinking? What, 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 what do you think that love is from God, the Father to the Son? Complete. Complete. Okay. So here's what he's saying in this. That love that we, can, we, we, we can't even totally fathom, the love of God to the Son is the same love that he has for you and me. In other words, he doesn't love Jesus more than he loves you. So now we need to kind of break that down a little bit more. Because that means he loves me the same as that person who shot those kids. See, that's hard to, to, to imagine. He loves me the same as he, as he loves Putin. He loves me the same as anyone. And we don't want to see that because why? That way there we, can, we don't have to be like him. See, if we realize that we're called, as he says, so they can have the same love that the Father and the Son have, it gives us an excuse why we don't have to act on our prayers. Oh, we'll pray for Putin, but I'm not really going to love him. I'm going to pray for this, but I'm not really going to do anything. But in this passage, folks, this prayer, he is saying 
that we need to be that essence of love. In other words, what is the answered prayer of Jesus? What's the answered prayer of Jesus? How is this prayer going to get answered? By sitting and doing nothing? That God's just going to miraculously touch everybody and everybody's going to start believing? No, the answered prayer is you. It is you living out and acting out the love that God showed Jesus and now shows us. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. But that's what Jesus is telling us. And he goes on to tell us that I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. Okay, now see, I might read this differently than many. But this, and, and we do have English teachers in here. Where I am, that's a present tense, right? It's not about a future thing. Is that correct? I'm looking at my sister who will correct me in my English. The what? Yeah, she knows English, though. <laughs> I, I see it as a present tense. He wants them to be where he is right now. And so the question that this kind of hit me to the wall was, am I there right now? Or am I waiting for the time that, that I get to the pearly gates? Because that's not what I think he's talking about. I want him to be given to me where I am to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. When was the last time you saw God's glory? Yeah. How about when Patrick was, was, was relaying his story as courageous story? Or the songs that these guys dedicated and, and work hard to perform and do. All these things are moments that, that we can show God's glory but by how we act. How we love each other. Because you loved me before the creation of the world. And then he says, righteous father, though the world does not know you. Okay, here you have the Son of God in, in the presence of people, and yet the world doesn't know him. I know you, and they know that you sent me. Do you know that God sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you? Do you, you oh, we all know that. We're all on the same page. Okay. So that's good. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them. Okay. Paul tells us that we are to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. We are to be that love to the world. We are to be that light, that beacon of hope. See, if, if we go to what the secular world, what this world has come to, again, not being different, diversity is great, but divisions, where is the love in dividing? Where is the love in setting up walls, us against them? Jesus says very clearly that the Father loves all people, male and female, black and white, Anglo and Hispanic. The list can go on and on, all these comparisons. But we people, we're, we're, we, we pray one thing, but we do the other. We speak in a divisive, division-type terminology. And I think this prayer is saying that if we want to be the answered prayer of Jesus Christ, we got to stop it. Stop it. You know what's the old slogan way back when I was in school? Just say no. We have to learn to say no. We have to say enough is enough. See, Jesus never prays about the issues. Go through scripture and see where Jesus prays about an issue. He prays constantly that your heart will be one with him. That God's will be done. That your sins are forgiven as you forgive others. That you'll love as you have been loved. He's worried about the condition of your individual heart. Because Jesus is very clear that there's going to be traumas, there's going to be disasters, there's going to be hatred, there's all these things that are going to be part of our life. And not once do I see Jesus addressing those moments. What he is addressing is how do we react to those moments. And his prayer is that we act out of love. Love thy God with all their heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. Here's the hard one. 
Love your enemy. See, God loves us all. And so his son, which we all say, is praying that we have oneness. Which for me is saying, Jesus is rejecting the boundaries and the division that we are setting up. And instead, we are to be seeing each other as one in Jesus Christ. A love. So we have in our scripture three people hanging on a cross. Mocking Jesus from the ground. One at the cross is mocking him. And one doesn't. Does Jesus destroy the person that's mocking him? Does he even say anything about him? No, that, that's on him. But the one who shows God's love, Jesus simply says, today you'll see me in paradise. When Jesus talks about the glory of the Father in life, once we put ourselves behind and let God lead us, I think you'll start seeing the glory of God in your everyday life. And yes, we, we're not going to fix the divisions. But we can be part of the remedy to fix our heart and let other people have the same gift that God has blessed you with. But we're not going to do it if we're constantly dividing each other out of hatred, out of pointing, out of blaming. So we need to keep praying. But I think we also need to listen to what Jesus is praying for you and me. Because I would dare say, the night before he died, this prayer must be pretty darn important. And we, a lot of times, just toss it aside. And we go with the flow. Us against them. Me against you. Black against white. Country against country. And that is nowhere in the teachings of Jesus Christ, folks. So I, I really hope you go back and read the book of Acts, the story of Acts, because that talks about love in its deepest way. I ask you to go back and reread John 17 that we read today. Read Jesus' prayers. Go back and read the Lord's Prayer and find what we're missing. And let us be the answer to Jesus' prayer. Let us be one as him and the Father are one. Amen. And so we live in, I believe, the greatest country on earth. We have been blessed with abundance. This last hymn really is speaking of all the abundance we have. And it's just a reminder, well, for me, as I listen to this song multiple times this week, am I living in gratitude? Am I living as one with Christ, showing everybody else or helping other people see the abundance that we have in Jesus Christ? So I ask you to stand up and sing with me hymn number 520, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
please remain standing. Oh. Amen. Please remain standing as the color guard comes and takes the flag out. Please. Please be seated. As I was speaking today, memories came up to me about my dad when he was preaching a, a sermon. And he was frustrated with the way the world was going. This is back in the 70s. And he was saying this, the church that he was serving, that if you're not going to listen to the word if you're not going to obey the word, if you're not going to live the word, then what good is the word? And he took the Bible and he ripped it. Sacrilegious is just words, folks. Prayer is just the prayer unless you put it into action. That's what his point was. When I crumpled that paper, I saw some expressions like, oh, what are you doing? See, if we simply read and do not, do not put the action of the word into our daily life. Not just the parts that we like, but every part of the word of God into our life. Then it might as well just be burned, thrown away, because it will do no good in your life if you're not putting it to work. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to happen instantly, but if it isn't happening, then keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, until you start realizing what it means to be one with God as Christ and the Father are one. That means we love. And we love. And we love some more. For in Jesus Christ, he never gave up on us. He won't give up on you. And he won't give up on the future. For in Christ, there is no end. Amen. <laughs>